You guys, how are you? Ever since Arsenal drew with Leeds, I had not yet listened or gotten back to you, but obviously I'm back in full soon to talk to you because you guys are really my amazing audience. Guys, Rokan David is my name. Rokani Media Football is a YouTube channel. You are really watching me on. Smash the like button, comment and share. If at all you're watching me for the very first time, endeavor to subscribe to this channel so as not to miss out on stories that we do upload in here on a daily. This story is really going to divide all create lots of divisions in the fans of Arsenal. I don't know what they are going to think about it after overcoming the Obomiang indiscipline after overcoming the indiscipline of Obomiang in the camp of Arsenal. Now a story has been retold to us by Sun Sport that maybe Arsenal is really interested in Ronaldo Cristiano. And after Arsenal drawing a draw of Southampton 1 1, lots of things have really come out and surfaced. Obviously, a team which goes by names of Arsenal is still leading the table two points ahead of Man City. But a former Guna has said Arsenal are still in the title race. And I don't know whether there is someone who doubts that. And obviously, Gwenduzi has come out and told us how they fell out with Mikel Arteta and why he had to move on to Marseille. Welcome to Rokani Media Football. Guys, if you're watching us for the very first time, all you've always been watching us and you've not yet subscribed, go in the lower right bottom corner, smash the subscription button after smashing it, hit the notification bell that will enable you get notified each and every time I put a video onto this channel. Now today, I don't want to really spend a lot of time really doing intros or what or saying hi on you, but thank you all of you that are really making this channel what it is right about now. Now, I have a story coming in from Sunspot and it read, all it reads that, Arsenal and Newcastle realize the quality Cristiano Ronaldo would bring in helping them to achieve their ambitions. But both clubs worry about the wider impact his arrival could have on the clubs. The most likely destination is now Italy in Napoli. Now, Arsenal realizing the quality Cristiano Ronaldo would bring in, helping them to achieve their ambitions. Obviously, the first ambition of their title, the first ambition of Arsenal is to win the Premier League title because... I believe if they increase the number of goals they are really scoring, for all they can average two goals a game, they can really win this title because Arsenal are really having a watertight defense. Now, Arsenal being interested in Ronaldo, telling us the sun that, sorry, being, being told to us by the sun is really something that is something I'm not believing because Mikel Ateta is fighting what we call the egoism at Arsenal. When you look at the ego at Arsenal that that uh, Ozil had, is the reason as to why he was really thrown out of the door. But if at all Ozil kept kept a cool head at Arsenal, he would have been at Arsenal like Grant Xhaka. You get because Grant Xhaka has really managed to really rebrand himself and he has really resurfaced as a player that is the most important player at the club of Arsenal right about now. So. Perik Merik Abomiang, if he really had the mentor and the mantra to come in through and really do the needful, obviously would have gone ahead to do the needful and really get to the levels of a team which goes by the names of Arsenal and be here under uh, Mikel Arteta. But because they fell out with him because of their ego or their big ego, obviously they couldn't be at the side which goes by the names of Arsenal. Now the big question is, can Mikel Arteta, can he tame the ego of Cristiano Ronaldo? Because the fact is, I believe the fallout of Ronaldo and Ten Hag is really going to continue because I don't see Ten Hag bringing on Ronaldo to play every game and start and play the number of minutes that he really wants to play because even when he played 70 minutes in the game of Newcastle and was taken off, Ronaldo was furious on the bench. In the game of Spurs, they, told, they tell Ronaldo, come on and play 7 minutes. He said no and he really walked from the dugout to the tunnel and that saw him suspended from training with the first team he never played a part in the game of Chelsea and obviously he was fined for two weeks of no salary meaning that he is losing close to 100 to 1 million 1 million pound a week sorry those two weeks because he earns 550,000 pounds a week so the fallout is there because an Arsenal fan will say, no, Ronaldo has trained with the first team of United today and I think they've buried the hatchet with Ten Hag. No, it's not the case. It's not the case because Ronaldo believes that he's the greatest of all time. He deserves to start. You get Ten Hag. 
tells him stats show something different each and every time you start for Manchester United we lose so what is left for these two I believe separation would be the best thing for these two parties because Ten Hag is the future for Manchester United Ronaldo is not the future Ronaldo is a finished article that you would love to take to a team that is competing for the Premier League title or Champions League and it has been really missing out on a clinical finisher like Ronaldo and you must be a certified team like Man City that you create chances game in game out to really see to it that Ronaldo really scores those goals you get but as things stand at Manchester United I think they are going to fall out and that's why Arsenal comes in the equation but Mikel Arteta won't allow Ronaldo to come I know it can be an easy deal to do for Arsenal, obviously, they're on top of the table and Cristiano Ronaldo would like to go to a team like Arsenal because, obviously, with his presence, he can come in and really net Arsenal some 20 goals a season. And those 20 goals a season might go ahead and really help Arsenal win the UEFA Europa League and win the Premier League because I've told you that Arsenal average, average to concede one goal a game in the Premier League. The only game they've conceded more than one was the game of Liverpool. And they came back and really won it. The same applies to the game of Leicester City, where they conceded two and they scored four to win that game for two. So it shows you that if Arsenal can really get that prolific number nine to go in and really score those goals for them, they're really going to be a very good side and very good side to go on and really compete in the Premier League and the UEFA Europa League, maybe the Champions League. And obviously, look at the Arsenal squad. When they add Ronaldo to their squad, obviously, they are short of playing in the Champions League next season. And I believe Ronaldo can be happy to go on and really play a role in that Arsenal side. But... That depends on whether Mikel Arteta really would love to see him as one of those players. Because I believe goals are really so much dry for Arsenal. And people will say, when you look at Gabriel Jesus missing out on two chances, last game they played against Southampton, obviously they will say Ronaldo would have scored one of those. But I'm telling you, don't rely on the Ronaldo that has been playing the game of football for the last two or three decades. Man, Ronaldo is a changed lad this season. He never had a preseason, and I don't really take that as an excuse because the chances he's getting, they don't need a player to have got involved into a preseason because a prolific striker is a prolific striker. That's it. Even if he's unfit, he'll bury that ball in the back of the net because that is what he has been doing game in, game out. But this season, Ronaldo is awful. If you've watched some games of United, Ronaldo has been really costful for United most of the games because every time he's on the field of play, United doesn't create enough and it doesn't really create enough. When it's off the pitch, United create enough and play better. So it shows you that when it comes in at Arsenal, that stardom might really affect the team and I believe that's the reason as to why Mikel Arteta won't need this player at Arsenal. But for Newcastle, I believe Newcastle can take him but I don't know on what on what circumstance because Ronaldo keeping playing in the Premier League is one of those is one of those dreams would love to maintain playing at the high level but obviously I believe he wants to go to the Champions League and play there because we are being told that the most likely destination is Italy and that is Napoli but Arsenal looking at him is really one of those stories that has really caught my eye and said I have to go in and really flaunt this story into the faces of Arsenal fans all over the world that view me on Rokani Media Football because we have some big audience in here for you that really get some good views to see to it whether this guy can really make it to Arsenal. So Arsenal fans over to you. Do you think you accept Ronaldo to come to your club to come in and really score goals for you? How is Mikel Arteta going to play them with Gabriel Jesus? Because the reason as to why he's really leaving United and falling out with Eric Ten Hag is he's not getting enough playing time. Will he get enough playing time at Arsenal? That is the big question that we have to come in here and answer. Where does it leave Edin Ketia? And doesn't it destabilize the camp of Arsenal? I don't know whether Edu and Mikel Arteta can agree on this project to bring in Ronaldo because he's not in the age bracket of the players they've been really chasing for. But obviously, never say never in the game of football, everything is possible. Because for me, their transfers I never saw coming. Van Persie crossing from, from Arsenal to Manchester United because Salix Ferguson knew to eat that. The likes of Man City coming into the equation. He needed a prolific number one striker to come in and really score those goals and who has been really doing it season in season out and obviously when he brought in Van Persie, Van Persie did it for United and United really won that game, of, won, the, won the Premier League. So I don't know whether Arsenal can go in and really decide on Ronaldo to boost their, their, 
their audience, their fan base all over the world. I don't know, but it looks like Ronaldo might be on a free transfer in January to leave a side which goes by the Manchester United on a free. And obviously, we can't wait to see where this guy is going to go. So tell me what to think about Ronaldo joining Arsenal. Now there is a man who goes by the Gwenduzi. Matteo Gwenduzi was at Arsenal, and I think I saw him in the era of Arsene Wenger. He's one of those players that came in from the Hell End Academy, and obviously he broke through to the first team. And I believe he had a talent, but Mikel Arteta fell out with him. Now, being asked on Bayin Sport, obviously, this is what he had to say about Mikel Arteta. He said, it's true that I did not have the best relationship with him. Beyond that, I always tried to work, always gave the maximum of myself in training and in matches. I still play a few matches with him. I still did great performances. That is Mattel Gwenduzi. Then he went ahead to say that he preferred other players and I respect that decision. That's why afterwards I also decided to leave because I was still young. I needed playing time to continue to progress. The most important when you are young is to play the game of football and get you um, 10 minutes to play. So I believe in Gwenduzi and you see how he's turning things around at Marseille and obviously he has really claimed a place into the French national team and i know he's really going to be among the 26 man squad didier deschamps is really going to take to qatar in the world cup and i think the announcement is not far away from now now we are really looking at the situation of Gendouz and michael ateta i know michael has fallen out with very many players at arsenal but that justifies how good he is because he has brought on players that have really managed to get Arsenal where it has not been for very many years even with the Arsene wenger Arsenal never really had this rhythm, you get? After that unbeaten run, Arsenal never really had this rhythm of really going ahead to win these games. And obviously, when you look at the players right now, Arsenal is not a selling club anymore. They're really a club that looks at keeping these players and really winning trophies because they know they can now survive without selling players because they believe they built the stadium that really had a big junk of the date to go in and really stop them from really retaining their players. If I told you never knew, Arsenal really had good players, but every season they needed to sell one player. They sold Thierry Henry, they sold Fabregas, they sold Van Passi, they sold Samir Nasri, Sanya, Kolo Ture, Adebayo, Rosiski, Heleb. You get the song belong the quality of the players they had was really immense but they really continued on selling these players and obviously whenever you sell your players you cannot really go to the next step but look at how Arsenal has really transformed the likes of Bukayo Saka and maintained them in the squad they've brought in the Gabriel Magales now if at all it was Arsenal of the years of Arsene Wenger trust me Gabriel Magales was going to be sold this summer because Juventus came in with close to 50 million pounds and I believe Arsenal would have said we bought him at like 29. We're making a profit of 21. Why not sell him and really get in the likes of Saliba and Ben White? Do really the needful. So that was Arsenal way back. But the Arsenal of the season is really improved. Mikel Arteta is doing a very, a very wonderful job. And I believe Gwenduz really did the right choice because he was really a very good player. But Mikel Arteta never believed in him that he can really go ahead and really turn things around at Arsenal. And obviously, you don't blame any manager for that because when a new manager comes in, he comes in with his own philosophy and the players he wants and his own game plan. So it looks like Gwenduzi couldn't fit the game plan of Arsenal. He was loaned to Marseille in France and obviously he was there with Willem Saliba. Saliba was brought back, but Gwenduzi had a buyback clause and he was sold back to Marseille at £9.5 million this summer and permanently he left a side which goes by names of Arsenal and is enjoying his side in Marseille. And if at all you want to see this guy play, I think the Champions League game is on tomorrow and Marseille is really going to play. You can as well enjoy it. And the best game is going to be there next week on Tuesday where Spurs is going to be playing away in France and Gwenduz is going to be part of that Marseille team that is going to play in the Champions League. I decide which goes by the names of, of Marseille or France. So Gwenduz is giving his reasons. I don't know what you think about them, whether they're valid or not, but I believe he is the biggest beneficiary and i believe even michael Ateta benefited because he brought in the likes of thomas Pate. you get and he's really doing a great job the likes of um sambi lokonga and obviously they are really enjoying their game of football now arsenal two points ahead of man city level at the same games played and obviously aaron ramsey was asked if arsenal can win the title 
he said they are top of the league, they've qualified for Europe, the knockout stages, and things are looking really good for them at the moment. Obviously, there is still a long way to go. I believe there is still a long way to go, but no one can really make me change my mind. I believe as not title contenders because I know you can't have a nice spell throughout the season. And as approaching Black November for Arsenal, you'll always know that that is a call that you get when Arsenal is approaching November because Black November is always one of those months that affects Arsenal. But the good thing is that in the Black November, Arsenal are really going to play, I think, only two Premier League games, meaning that <laughs> they can really see themselves really get relieved and play those other games in December when they return from the World Cup. But obviously, it's really something great for a team which goes by the names of Arsenal. They've gone ahead to do the needful and obviously be into the title race. I believe and keep my word strong that Arsenal are really title contenders. People won't believe it, but I know they are going to reinforce in January. That's why we did the story of Ronaldo. There are some other four or five players that Arsenal be linked to. There's a left back coming in from Germany and obviously playing for Frankfurt and Arsenal really looking at him. So let's wait and see what's going to go on and really put Arsenal to the next level because it looks like they are in for a title race and obviously looking at Ronaldo and the title race. Gwendo is speaking out and Ramsey, the former Gunnar, speaking out on the title chances for Arsenal. Thank you guys for watching in. Rock and David is my name. Smash the like button, comment and share. If you're watching us for the very first time, lower right bottom corner, smash the subscription button after smashing it, hit the notification bell that anybody get notified each and every time I upload a video onto this channel. I sign out for now. See you later. Your reactions are welcome in the comment section below. Tell me what you think about Ronaldo to Arsenal. Big question mark in there for you. Are Arsenal still in the title race? Aaron Ramsdale says yes. Sorry, Aaron Ramsdale says yes. And obviously, Gwenduzi coming out and explaining why he fell out with his former manager at Arsenal known as Mikel Ateta, the gaffer. I hand you over to the Almighty Lord. May him watch over you throughout the day. I'm out.